What's up, people? How you doing today? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Rondell. My name is April. And we are happy you guys joined us for this one. <laughs> yes. Uh, you guys read the title. You know what this is all about. For a multitude of different reasons, people are exiting the United States. Yeah, I mean, now more than ever, people are deciding we don't need to stay here. There are many other places that we have the opportunity to live in, so why not? The world has opened back up, and so have options, and people are exercising these options for a lot of different reasons. The political landscape, uh, looking for somewhere that has a higher quality of life for them. Mm -hmm. Some places it has a lower cost of living, <laughs> which is one of the same for most people. True, definitely. Um, and especially now with remote work being on the rise, people are like, mm -hmm. hey, I can work from home or I can work from anywhere in the world. So it became possible for a lot of people to work internationally, yeah. right? Uh, some people are just doing it for the heck of the adventure, you know, like me, I just love the adventure of it all. Just for a lot of different reasons, people are moving around the United States and exiting the United States. So we wanted to give you some options you may not have thought of previously. Now, usually when we do some research and we check out different countries, we're focused on quality of life mm -hmm. and the low cost of living. All we emphasize on primarily <laughs> has been the cost of living and looking for that low cost of living. Like it's synonymous with the uh, quality of life. And honestly, it's not always synonymous with the quality of life. Quality of life can look very different for different people. So when we say it, we're considering the cost of living, economic conditions, governance, human rights, healthcare, things to do, and infrastructure. So this video is primarily concerned with the quality of life. But lots of things uh, cause people to leave the United States, Roe v. Wade, um, different uh, relations with the police, and just a bunch of different reasons. So people are looking for different landscapes to land in. So we want to offer some more of those landscapes and give our perspective of them. So without any further ado, here are our countries you can consider if you are leaving the United States. And we try to touch on a little something for everyone. So New Zealand is a worthwhile place to look at if you're looking at life in Oceania. Mm -hmm. uh, that region of the world, beautiful area, beautiful scenery, wonderful air quality, and a great place to raise a family. Right. It's known as the adventure capital of the world. Mm -hmm. And besides the stunning landscapes and the array of places for adrenaline junkies to get their fix, this country is rated really highly mm -hmm. in a lot of really great areas. Yeah, like gender equality. Um, racial equality. Racial equality. And the government is a hell of a lot more stable than a lot of governments in the world. So not only that, there are still a lot of really great aspects about New Zealand. It's considered the ninth best place for women to exist. <laughs> I mean, it's, it is- You won't have to burn your bras, right? <laughs> it's ranked highly as one of the most liberal countries in the world. So the most all liberal the government, yeah. equalities that we mentioned also includes LGBTQ equality as well. Another something to consider is the healthcare in New Zealand. They offer universal healthcare and you're able to pay into that plan as an expat. You're an expat with residency or you have a work visa for two years, for those, then yes, yes yeah. you can pay into that low cost universal healthcare system. So again, if you're looking for a stable place with a stable government, that's a good place to raise your children, a good place to flourish. That's one of the happiest places in the world. That's right, happiness index is off the meter, then New Zealand may be the place for you. What is that dance they do? What is it called? The hop. <clears throat> Next on our list, you guys, is the land of tulips. As you may know, the Netherlands. Yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Is man. known to be a very super progressive and liberal nation. Yeah, man, this is a progressive place to say the least. They really care about the environment. The people have a strong social purpose. Uh, they really believe in the religious freedom, yep. standing up for what they believe in as Human well, rights. and trustworthy. They really believe that a person is what they say. So they really are big on trustworthiness here. Um, apart from all of that, we believe it has a high quality of life because well, one of the reasons being that it is the second best place in the world for women. You gotta have a high quality of life if your women are happy. 
True. Facts. Also, air quality is pristine. Universal healthcare is a real thing here. So expats have to actually register here to tap into their universal healthcare and be pay into their Dutch health plan, which is about 110 year olds to 120 year olds per month. Uh, but you have access to their universal health care. The government here is seen as stable, reliable, and trustworthy. Look, in today's world, like that's a rarity. <laughs> so that was a big deal for me. Another thing that's really interesting is that they have the highest English ranking of mm -hmm. any country where English isn't the official language. So you're going to be able to get by. It's not the cheapest nation in the world. Uh, this is not Thailand by any stretch of the imagination in regards to cost of living, but the quality of life and the trustworthiness of the government make it a place that's added to our list. Now there's a lot to be said about being someplace where you can see yourself on TV, where you can see yourself in the media, where you can see your brothers and sisters walking up and down the streets. Mm -hmm. My people were talking about Africa. Uh, one of the places with the highest quality of life in Africa and the highest healthcare quality is South Africa. South Africa, this is a land, a country, that's considered like a world in one country in regards to landscapes because there's so much here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's over 1,600 miles of coastline, there's mountain ranges, there's deserts, there's rolling hills, lush farmland, and so much more. And I'm just dreaming of Africa, y'all. Uh, it's a relatively young democracy, uh, but as I understand it, the price of living there and the opportunity for new businesses is also flourishing there. I have to add that it's one of the more liberal countries in yeah, Africa. They a have a point. healthy LGBTQ community mm -hmm. there, um, which we get to see a lot of by watching Julian. Shout out, Julian. <laughs> what up, big fella? And it's just a place that I definitely want to travel to and check out for myself. So anyway, South Africa is on our list for the reasons that we listed. The uh, good environment, access to good health care. Not to mention their food is top oh, come on. tier. Come on. Okay. I, I can't wait to experience it, you guys. <laughs> and freshness and availability all throughout the country. So. Salut. Hey you guys, just wanted to give an honorable shout out to three of the major countries that always make the different lists of expat, digital nomad, desirable locations. These countries have a high quality of life and a low cost of living. Uh, and the first country we're gonna talk about is Mexico. Viva Mexico! We love you, Mexico. And if you guys want to set up shop closer to home, closer to the United States, you cannot do better than Mexico. The quality of life is very high and the cost of living is very, very low. The locals are very friendly. It's easy to integrate into the culture. You find lots of enclaves of US citizens who speak the language and can help you get along inside of the culture. And the culture is just more than bite-sized. It's a lot to delve into and enjoy and experience. Number two on our list, of course, in no particular order, is the land of smiles, Thailand. Again, low cost of living, high quality of life, very, very, very safe. The land of smiles is open and willing to take you in, you digital nomads. And rounding out our list of honorable mentions is Portugal. This country makes a lot of different lists of ours because it's an awesome, awesome country. Lots of our friends have moved there. They love the high quality of life there. They also love the fact that they can explore the rest of Europe from an affordable location. We're on our last country and we kind of had a back and forth on what this would be. It was a battle royale up in here, y'all, for real. So we were debating between Panama versus Costa Rica. Yes. Uh, for our Patreons out there, if you want to hear our full review of these two countries, click on over to the Patreon page and it's right there. So we went with Costa Rica because mm -hmm. it just made the list of so many different articles yeah. that were geared towards foreigners and expats looking for a different country to live in. Now it's Pura Vida, you guys. Uh, throughout the country, on the Pacific coast and the Caribbean coast, the beaches, they're all pristine, wonderful living. We're able to access high-speed internet throughout the country in all of these areas, the highlands and the lowlands. Um, and the people themselves are the, the major resource of this country. We really love engaging with the people throughout the country. They're not xenophobic. They don't have a fear of foreigners. They actually mm -hmm. enjoy foreigners and showing them the really good life that uh, Costa Rica has to offer. Yes, that really slow pace, kind of mm -hmm. go with the flow, mm -hmm. beautiful the lifestyle. Lots of fresh fruits and veggies around every corner. Uh, lots of excellent, good restaurants to go to. What's the one area that all the expats live in? 
That would be the Central Valley region. Mm-hmm. Right outside of San Jose. Mm-hmm. Not not all of the expats, but that's a very large uh, expat enclave there. Uh, we found that the shopping over there, the restaurants over there, the housing over there, all of it was top notch. The country has been inviting expats and retirees for over three decades. Mm-hmm. So there are lots of different pockets of expat communities all around the country. But people have no issue with the government here. Mm-hmm. It seems to have a long standing democracy and it seems to be a country that's pretty politically stable. Uh, sincerely, uh, they also have a very strong healthcare system. They have universal health care. You do have to pay into it at, when you become a resident in the country, mm-hmm. uh, but it is very very affordable. Did we mention that Costa Rica has a pretty high safety rating in regards to like all the other countries in Mm -hmm. Central America? Mm -hmm. (laughs) This country has no military and they're pretty much considered the Switzerland of Central America. Mm -hmm. All the, they settle all the disputes in Central America. So again, wonderful country to be in, wonderful place to uh, spend your retirement, wonderful place to spend some serious time if you're a digital nomad. So That rounds out our list. Uh, We hope that was an interesting list for you, and we hope you heard about some countries that you may not have considered before. We just want to say thank you guys for joining us, and we want to say that there is no such thing as the perfect country. Ain't no utopia out here, y'all. Not at all. Uh, So if you guys have some negative comments about the countries that we talked about, I'm going to ask you to stow (laughs) it. I'm going to ask you to keep it. But if We don't want to hear it. See, for real. And if there is a country that you favor, countries that you like that we did not mention. Let us know in the comments. What countries do you want to immigrate to? What countries do we need to check out next? Mm -hmm. Let us know. We'll be there for sure. Uh, It's time for my wife and I to bid you adieu. So until next time, peace and love, y'all.